Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. G Garcia, what's happening? Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Discoveries, the journals of Lewis and Clark. Now, last year, there was a game that came out at uh, Essen in 2013 uh, called Lewis and Clark. Mm -hmm. And this is the same designer, same company. This is essentially a dice version of that game. Now, Lewis and Clark was a game that I thought was a well-designed game, but did not like. What did you think of Lewis and Clark? Boring. I really liked it, but I liked it at, at smaller play, player counts. I would never play with more than three, but with two or three... Really liked it. All right, so I'm still always excited. Even if I hate a game, if I find out there's a dice version of that game, it might be good. In fact, I'm starting to think dice versions are better than the game. <laughs> How does this one fit into that? Let's take a look. The board here is mostly for show. You, and you have two sides of the board. On one side, you're going to have these uh, American Indian cards, which are actually the reverse sides of the travel cards that will be over here. You have a deck of these cards. Uh, going through the whole deck will trigger the end of the game, and you'll take out a certain number of cards depending on the number of players. Now at the beginning of the game, each player is going to be rolling their dice here and putting them in this area. These are active dice that you have that you can use. Now when a player uh, rolls these dice, there are different sides to them. There are two sides with feet on them, foot travel. There's one side with a horseshoe. Uh, there's one side with an American Indian symbol. And then there are two sides with letters on, which are journal symbols. Now on your turn, uh, when it comes to you, you have two actions. You can use dice to take an action, or you can retrieve dice. Now when using dice, sometimes you're just going to spend a die and instantly do something with that die. For example, you can spend any die you want to switch your card here, each person starts with a travel card, with one of the travel cards next to the board. So let's say I do that, let's say I, I spend this one here, and I put it over here on the board. Uh, whenever I use these, you see the arrows point this way, that means I put one on the board up here, and then I can switch this card, let's say I want this eight point card here, so I put that card there. I can also spend an Indian Chief card, an Indian American Indian uh, die, to not only I'll get a gray die, which at the end of my turn I'll roll and add to my area, but I can also choose one of these cards over here. These cards over here will give me special abilities that I will have. For example, this one here changes this, this uh, action here to two different dice rather than two of the same, and others will give me extra actions that I can take if I put the right dice on them. Now when you take an action with dice, you can spend all the dice of the same type. So there's another action here. I can spend two Indian heads to take a, a card, and that's because there's two different types. There are the friendly Indians, and then there are the wary Indians. These take two to get, these take one. So if I had three Indian heads, I could take two different cards, all on the same turn. Uh, but you would only, you can only take each action once, but you can use all the same ones. If I had four, I could do those two, and then spend one to switch cards out, okay? Now, some actions you can store up down here. These actions take multiple turns because they take two different types of dice. They take a, one type of dice to set it up, and then they take a journal one to basically have the action occur. These are traveling dice. So this one here takes one horseshoe. This one here takes two walking. So I'll put one walking there and put the other up on the board. Uh, this one here takes three of the same dice. So maybe I have uh, three footprints. So I'd put one footprint here and put the other two up on the board and then on a future turn if you have dice that will launch these I could say okay I'm gonna launch this and this that lets me travel on five rivers or maybe I'm gonna launch this one two mountains and three rivers or maybe I have all three two mountains and five rivers now I need a lot because to travel through this card you have to do the whole thing in one shot so I need one mountain and four rivers so I would have to use all three to do this. If I did that, I would get eight points, and I would stick it over here to show that it's completed, and then I would get another card from up here. I'd pick which one of these cards I want. 
it's possible that I could possibly in one turn not only finish my card, but finish another card up here. And you say, well, yeah, you had an extra river, an extra mountain. I do, but I have to do the cards in order. So my two mountains were already used. There's no leftover mountains to use on another card. But let's say I had enough actions to do two cards in a row. I would finish that card and then take another card that I would keep. And then when that's all finished, I would get another whole turn. So finishing these will get you, if you've ever finished two cards in the same turn, you'll get an extra turn. Now, of course, you're going to get better actions if you take some of these American Indian cards, because you see this one, two horseshoes in it, and then the journal symbol gives you two rivers and two mountains. This one here gives you four rivers or four mountains, and there are all sorts of different combinations, three mountains, one river, four mountains that are in the deck that you'll be able to use. So those are the actions you can take. The other thing is you can retrieve dice. As the game goes by, people are going to be placing dice here on the board. And so on your turn, you can retrieve all the dice from this side, or all the dice from this side, or you can retrieve all of your color back no matter where they are. See, if I take all the dice from this side, I'll roll them and put them here in my area. Well, now I have someone else's dice that are in my area. So I can use other people's dice, and this is a feature of the game, plus the gray neutral dice. But someone can take their colored dice back from me, even if that die is on an action space. So I have to be very cautious when using other people's dice. And that's it. You just keep going back and forth and back and forth until the deck runs out. Then everyone gets one last turn when you can't refill one of these up here. Then players are going to get all the points in the cards that they have collected over the time of the game. Also, depending on the number of players, which side you use, for each set of different symbols you get on your cards, you'll get, like if I have one fish, I'll get a three. But if I have a fish, a bird, and a leaf, I'll get 15. If I have a fish, a bird, and two leaves, I'd get 15 plus three more for the extra leaf. And then you count the number of TP symbols. These are mostly on the Indian cards, but they are occasionally on the travel cards too. And whoever has the most of those will get points according to this also. Most points is the winner of the game. There's also one action I didn't mention where you can use, you can discard dice to change the size of your dice to other facings, which is a big deal because you want to get them to where you need them to be. Right. So, first of all, let's talk about components. What do you think of the components? I thought the components were really well made. I like the uh, cards, even though they have, they have that one square corner, which is a little strange, right? Does that bother you that much? It bugs the heck out of me. Yeah, it doesn't really bother well, me that much. Here's, but... here's where it bothers me because, yes, I know you're supposed to, it's so you can stick them in the corner of the board. Right, right. But when you are reshuffling those cards, mm -hmm. they all have to be the same way now. Right, right. It takes right. a long time to reshuffle those cards. Right, but but I mean, they do. you have to be careful about the front and the back anyway, so. Oh, oh that's not that hard. I'm telling you, they're just like, oh, oh I gotta turn these around. <laughs> It really didn't bother me that much. I thought the dice were really well made. I thought the dice the, uh, are great. I mean, everything is well constructed. The minor niggling things for me are that one square corner, which is definitely not as big a deal for me as it is for these guys. And then the central board is this big <laughs> board <laughs> for no reason. It doesn't really do anything. Again, not a big deal, but I'm, I'm, again, I try not to complain about things that are overdone. And this is like, oh, this is too good. That's not a complaint I, I tend to harp on, but it's sort of a super superfluous board. Yeah, it does. I mean, <clears throat> it's very superfluous, but it does keep keep track of what dice are supposed to go where. Right, right. Yeah, that is helpful. But I mean, that that's helpful, but it's a whole board just for that. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know what, though? I, I like the board. I think it looks good. I, I think the art is really good. Yeah, in this the game. art is awesome. Yeah. And the graphic design is really well done. Yes. I never sat and said, I wonder what that means. It was easy. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple of the special cards where you had to look them up sure. to see what that yeah. meant. But they, once you looked it up, you're like, oh, duh. That's what that means. Right, right. So it was pretty, it's, it's well put together. What do you think of the main mechanism, the dice circulation of the game? I I really enjoy the feel of the game. I, it took me a little bit to get used to it because it's a... For some reason, the game to me has a slower cadence than I thought it would. It takes... Like, doing things in the game are not as fast as I expected them to be, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, I have to set this up and then that's it and then set this up and then set this up and then fire a big turn off. That's not bad. It just... 
took me a little bit of time to get used to. This is a dice game version of the original game, but it's about as quick. It's not really necessarily quicker. Right. I feel like an individual turns pretty fast, so I felt like I went and boom, boom, it comes back to me almost right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, to make, you know, to, to travel, if you would, does take a lot of planning. Now, I'll definitely give up the cadence and then the, the speediness of it for how much goes into planning a turn, which I think is really interesting. And it's yeah. very... It's thematic. It, it is thematic, and it's, it's, it's neat having the new cards you can, you can draft and give you new powers. And, I mean, the game definitely opens up, which I really like, you know. Yeah. And, and feels like a nice arc between where you started the game and where you ended the game. Mm -hmm. it, your board is different. You have new powers other people don't have. I think that's exciting. Yeah, it's really cool. The variable player powers that come into it as you draft those new, uh, those new Indian tribes is really cool. The uh, the thing that I was uh, thinking about was that uh, uh, man, I just brain farted. Well, while you think about that, Go ahead. the thing I really like is just that I call it the dice circulation. It's a really cool mechanism. I grab all the dice on one side. I grab all the ones on the other side. Go ahead. Go or, is that what you're going to say? I got or I grab all the different dice of, one, of my color. Mm -hmm. And I really like that aspect of like, ooh, I'll take a bunch of Z's dice, but I better put, use them quickly. Yes. Because at any moment, he can grab them back. You can even grab dice that are someone's about to use. So, like on those actions, I never try to put my opponent's dice. Sure. But sometimes you right. do anyway. And once the gray dice run out, when you take one, you take one from the person who has the most mm -hmm. gray dice, which can be... You know, harrowing. I, I just thought that the dice flow was really cool. I never felt like, oh, there's no dice. Although there's several times you're like, ooh, I'm going to grab a pile of dice. Then the guy who goes before you goes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. But at yeah. least then you can pull your color dice. You can always have five dice, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Or you finish a big turn and you're like, yeah, that was cool. And then the next guy next to you goes. <laughs> right. And right. grabs all those dice. The rule book says that you may... Uh, finish a second card on your turn and, and it's almost like well if you get around to it or you need to finish two cards on your turn if, if at all possible well it's not possible in the beginning I know in the beginning but once you get your engine going with those different tribes and everything coming in to help you uh, if you're not doing two cards um, I would say you know every other maybe turn because there were some people in, in my in, in game. You mean every played. every other turn two cards? I don't that's, know, that's yeah, a lot. I don't, um, I, can, I don't think I can I can keep that speed. Uh, well, which is why I lose. Jason, I guess, right? Yeah, okay. If okay. Jason can Anomaly. do it, it's possible. No, if Jason <laughs> could do it, it's possible. And I'm telling you, there were times where it just seemed like every single time he went on a journey, he was doing two cards because he was planning ahead and and going through that slow cadence that that you were talking about but he was planning ahead and making sure that he had all the dice necessary to do two cards on that next big turn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so every time he did one of those turn in uh rounds he was doing two cards and uh if you don't do that don't expect to win and one thing i really like about this game compared <laughs> to the original game is that it, it salvages the harsh logistics of the original game in the original game, if you needed to take a rest action and you had poorly handled your turn, meaning you had cards left, you had uh, the tribes left, you would move backwards on the, on the track. And this game is equally punishing because when you go on a journey, anything you did not use that was prepped and ready to fire off comes off anyway. And so it forces you to do really clean, really thorough planning and that's, that's an interesting exercise, I yep. think. I would actually like it better if it was a little more freer. I like the game a lot. Mm -hmm. But I wish, like, for example, that you, when you have to do things in order, and so I got three mountains and four rivers, mm -hmm. and I need two mountains and then th four rivers and then two mountains. I can't do that because I can't mm -hmm. split my mountains. Right. I almost wish you could. It would just make that much faster. We actually it, played that way the first time we played it. Incorrectly, of course. Right, right. But, um, and I think I ran away with it. You did that first time we played. This was we were still at at Gen Con when we played the right. first time. Just us two, and I got that rule wrong, and we played mm -hmm. like that, where you could just you just had a pool of things, and it made the game a little bit faster, I think. Yeah, but, because it's easier to finish stuff. Yeah, yeah, but but you could knock out those two cards so easily, it it became moot. Right. To do okay. That. Well, the, either way, I'm, for me, I think the game is is really good. I would. 
I would much rather play this in Lewis and Clark, although I would argue and say that they're really two different games. Oh, sure. Lewis and Clark is a deck building or hand building type game where you play cards. Here you're building up a tableau of special actions that you can take and you're just trying to get, you're trying to get set collections of cards. The journey isn't so much of a journey as it is just, I need to get three rivers and two mountains, now I got that card. Mm -hmm. I like it, I think the dice thing makes the game, so for me this gets one and a half um, old muskets up. <laughs> one and a half. I don't think they were using muskets at this point, were they? Rifles? I don't know. Well, I'm gonna give this uh, two huge bisons up. This is a very cool uh, dice game for me, and the theme fits well with uh, the mechanics, and that's one of the things that I'm really, really looking for. Uh, I was I was bored with the with the original game. had no re had no desire to play it at all. This came along, and I was actually kind of uh, trepidatious about playing it because I didn't like the first game at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, we gave it a whirl, and that opened my eyes to it. I really enjoy it. So two huge bison up. Okay, cool. And I, like I said, didn't like the original. So I was just hoping this would be at least as good. This is definitely at least as good as that, quite possibly better, because I can play with more people. The first game is just heavier. It's a, it's a more complex game. And so for me, I'm going to give it two frosty mountains up. Ooh, frosty very, mountain top. Very good game. So that's five and a half thumbs out of six. There you go. Correct. That's Discoveries. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>